another argument for putting restraints on policy makers is about the games which the policy makers they play with voters and the games which the policy makers play among themselves so we'll talk about two kinds of games and uh, because of this also there should be restraints which should be put on the policy makers on the politicians now, first of all, let's talk about the games which the policy makers play with voters. So, what they do is that they know that the voters, they have short-sightedness. So, they might trade off the short-term gain for the long-run losses because people, they have very short-sighted memory. They, uh, they won't be able to think it for long and uh, they will just see what we are doing it currently. And they'll forget about what will happen in the future and what we have done in the past. So that's an idea. Uh, so politicians, please write. We try to fool. A short-sighted electorate electorate by choosing policies By choosing policies with short-run benefits. And long-run losses. So what are the examples of all this? So Blanket has given two examples. Example one, hmm. tax cuts. Example one is about tax cuts, right? The government may announce the policy that we are going to reduce the taxes today. Okay, fine, very good. Because uh, voters will think, fine, this government is very good. This is reducing the taxes. But the moment your taxes are reduced and government has not reduced its expenditure, then the government deficit is going to be created, right? Where do you think the government is going to get money in order to fill up its deficit? By increasing taxes. So it might have, it might have reduced taxes today, but it will have to increase taxes tomorrow. But the problem is that the uh, short-sighted uh, voters uh, they will think that the politicians are doing good today. And because the voters are short-sighted, short the politicians are also tempted to what is good today and forget about what harm or what loss it is going to bring tomorrow. Are you getting the argument? The argument says this, is that if you are going to reduce the taxes today, So your deficit is what? Government's income. Government's income is tax minus government's expenditure. So I have reduced taxes unless I also reduce expenditure at the same time. Unless I do this, the deficit is going to increase. And I will have to finance this deficit somehow. How will I finance this deficit? By increasing taxes tomorrow. By increasing taxes tomorrow. Right. So the larger deficit today is going to require more uh, uh, taxes tomorrow. Reduction in taxes without decrease in the government expenditure has led to the larger deficit. 
larger deficit will lead to higher taxes to borrow. One thing, right? And uh, the politicians will be scared when uh, the, the deficit actually becomes too much that they can't do much about it. Right? So in order to please voters, they might take up something which is a short-run gain, but this is going to be harmful tomorrow. There's another example which he gives. Hmm. There's another example which he gives. Uh, so that is expanding. Aggregate demand. Just before election. Expanding aggregate demand just before election. What do you mean by this? Hmm. Politicians, they mainly want to please voters because politicians, they want to get re-elected, right? Uh, and uh, you know this, that there is a trade-off between the unemployment and inflation. We have been talking about this since the Phillips curve. And uh, in Phillips curve also, we have seen that's the, that is a trade-off between the unemployment and inflation. So if you, if you reduce unemployment, it will bring out, it will bring growth but it is also going to increase the prices. So one thing which people have to understand is government is taking up some action so that it is igniting the growth today. It is increasing the economic activity today. It is expanding the aggregate demand today. But higher growth today, it is going to lead to increasing prices. When the prices are going to increase, ultimately what will happen? Demand will be falling. When demand will fall, what will happen? Output is going to fall. When output is going to fall, what will happen? Employment is going to fall. And hence, growth is going to fall later on, right? Because the output is falling. So higher growth will be, uh, will, uh, will be followed by the lower growth tomorrow. Higher growth today, will be followed by the lower growth tomorrow. So that's a political business cycle theory, which says this, that uh, uh, just before the elections, these, uh, these uh, politicians, they will try to increase the aggregate demand. They will try to increase the growth. And uh, then when they would be elected, they would do something so that to reduce the price. That's what the idea is uh, so politicians may try to please voters. by increasing aggregate demand just before the election, just before the election, right? This is going to lead to higher growth and lower unemployment, right? If you are having growth, which is above the normal rate, it is, I mean, economy will turn back to its natural rate. It is not going to be sustained forever. No, you, you can't do that. Huh? So higher growth now must be followed by lower growth tomorrow. You can't help that. Higher growth now must be followed 
by lower growth later. Lower growth later, right? Uh, so uh, this is what the political business cycle theory is. So I'll just write that line. Uh, but with the right timing, and short-sighted voters. Higher growth can win elections. And win elections, right? Uh, so we, you, you actually can assume this that just before elections, the growth is going to be higher. Uh, just before election, growth is going to be higher, uh, and then after election, growth is going to fall. Thus, we might expect. clear political business cycle it's a beautiful name that this business cycle i mean it is manufactured it is not coming on its own they are manufacturing it just before election they are pumping up the economy your y is equal to c plus i plus g so they are increasing g because of that y is increasing and you will find oh growth is there so you will see also just before indian elections growth is going to be higher but after that it is going to fall. It's a clear political business cycle. With higher growth on an on average. Just before elections, and after it, then after it, right? So what I'll do is that I'll talk about the games between the policymakers in the next video, right? Sure. Thank you, Vita.